Hey, thanks for joining me this morning. I'm Brother Barnabas, and we're continuing on in our um, devos uh, today. We're in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 29, and um, and we're kind of picking up in the second part of um, John the Apostle's um, narrative about John the Baptist. And last time we learned that John the Baptist came and um, baptizing people for repentance, and um, and we talked about how much that is needed today. And we talked about um, how he said, make, way, make straight the way of the Lord. And we talked about making straight the way of the Lord in our own hearts and in the, the lives of people around us. And uh, today we're going to pick it up then in um, chapter 1, uh, verse 29. And um, John the Apostle writes about John the Baptist then. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him. But the one who sent me to baptize with water told him, told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. So John the Baptist, who who all along has said, you know, um, I'm not the Messiah, I'm not Elijah, I'm not the prophet, um, but I'm and there's one who is coming after me who is um, going to be greater than I am. And the one who comes after me, I'm not worthy to untie the strap of his sandal. You know, so John the Baptist was clear that uh, one greater than him was coming. And when he saw Jesus, um, he said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And um, and that is such so insightful, I think, for uh, John the Baptist, even early on, you know, to see that Jesus uh, would be the Lamb of God, the Lamb that is slain to take away the, the sins of the world. And when I was a new believer, I remember reading this and thinking, the Lamb of God. And I think we're actually singing a song about the Lamb of God. And I thought, Jesus is the Lamb of God. What is that? Because, you, know, you know, I'd heard that Jesus was like a lion, you know, the Lion of Judah or, you know, in C.S. Lewis and uh, and his books, you know. But, um, you know, but but the Lamb, I didn't understand that. Uh, so it's important that we just grasp this real quick. You know, many of us are take this for granted. Oh, we know what the Lamb of God is. But there might be some listening today that um, don't realize that Jesus is not only a conquering king, our Messiah, the Lion of Judah, the one, mighty warrior who comes in power and delivers us and who will be victorious at the end of all time at Armageddon. You know, Jesus is also the Lamb of God. And um, that reflects back to Passover. And um, and the Israelite people, uh, way back when they were enslaved in Egypt, um, when God delivered them through the ten plagues, uh, on the tenth plague, when um, all the firstborn um, sons were going to be killed uh, by the angel of the Lord, you know, the um, God gave these instructions to to slaughter a lamb and take the blood and put it on the doorposts of the homes, and then when the angel of the Lord saw the blood, he would pass over, and um, and that's the name Passover, Passover. And uh, those that had the blood on the doorpost, um, the oldest son would not be killed. The angel of the Lord would know, you know, this is one of God's people. And um, and it's the same principle for Jesus. He's the Lamb of God, and um, and he was slain at the day of preparation for Passover. And it's really fascinating if you get into the history of it. And if you have not understood that, if you haven't. Um, study this out, um, do some research, you know, Google it or, um, you know, just go to the Old Testament and um, and read about the first Passover, read about the 10 plagues and how God delivered them from Egypt. And, you know, I'm going down a rabbit trail here, but, you know, just receive it, my friend. Jesus is the Lamb of God slain from the foundations of the earth for the forgiveness of sins for the whole world for yours and mine. And I'm so thankful for that. And I know we all are. So uh, John the Baptist said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And then when he baptizes them, you know, he says, um, um, I come baptizing with water. 
but someone's going to come that's going to baptize. Jesus is going to come, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And then uh, it says he uh, he's gave this testimony that John the Baptist says, when I, when I baptized Jesus, I saw the Holy Spirit come like a dove and rest upon him. And um uh, and we have this uh, sto- this um, this story, this true story, uh, in the other Gospels as well. All the writers thought this was important to include, that when John the baptized John the Baptist baptized Jesus, the Holy Spirit came like a dove, and and came upon him and remained upon him. It says, and that's important because in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come upon kings and empower them. Uh, for their kingly duties. The Holy Spirit would come upon prophets and they would speak with ecstatic utterances and give prophetic words and the Holy Spirit would come. But then the Holy Spirit would leave them. And you might remember the psalmist, uh, David, you know, saying, take not thy Holy Spirit from me, you know, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Now today, the Holy Spirit came and remained upon Jesus and he became, or he always has been, he is the baptizer and the Holy Spirit. In other words, he is the one who um, doesn't just immerse people in water. He immerses people in the Holy Spirit. For to bat, that word baptize is literally to immerse, to dunk, to, to cover with water. You know, like when we do the dishes, you know, in a, in a big sink of water, we put them in there and we, you know, we could say we baptize them in, in water. We immerse them in water. So when, when John the Baptist says, you know, I am baptizing with water, but one who is coming who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. He's talking about, you know, the Holy Spirit has come and remained upon Jesus, the Messiah. And then those that follow him, he will baptize them. He will immerse them in the Holy Spirit. And that's our promise. And um, and that is such a huge blessing that the Holy Spirit remains on Jesus and the Holy Spirit remains upon us and lives in us um, as as believers in Jesus. And so he um, he says, the man on whom you see the spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. So the presence of the Holy Spirit upon Jesus was evidence to John that this is the one. This is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. This is the Messiah. This is the chosen one. And um, and I think this is true of us today, too, that as we as we um, fill as we're continually filled with the Holy Spirit, as Paul writes, you know, be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, and um, as we as we live in this realm of being filled with the Holy Spirit, then it is a mark upon us. It is a seal, Paul writes in Ephesians, uh, upon us. And others in the world can recognize that, that here is one, here is a here is a brother in Christ, a sister in Christ, a follower of Christ who is marked by the Holy Spirit, who has the presence of God upon them who is uh, so full of the Holy Spirit that they're just full of love, they're full of joy, they're full of peace, they're full of um, of every good thing. You can just tell that they have been with Jesus. You can tell that the, um, that the presence of God flows to them and through them to others. And, um, and that is a mark of a believer in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes upon them and the Holy Spirit lives inside of them. And, um, and you know, I'm just going to speak honestly. Sometimes we can get um, sidetracked by words and theologies and preconceived ideas, you know. And, um, and, and it's a shame that, that Christians will divide themselves and argue about um, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, about speaking in tongues, about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And they miss the larger point here that the Spirit of the living God came and rested upon Jesus and identified him as the chosen one of Israel, the Messiah, the Lamb of God. And um, and the Holy Spirit remained upon him. And Jesus has that anointing, that ability to baptize people in the Holy Spirit, to immerse them in the Holy Spirit. 
And, um, and there's lots of scriptures that talk about how when we, when we become born again, when we put our faith in God, when we put our faith in Christ, then um, we, we too are sealed by the Holy Spirit. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. The presence of God comes and lives inside of us. And, um, and today, uh, let's not miss uh, this opportunity uh, to come and ask God to fill us afresh with his Holy Spirit. Thank him that he lives with inside of us and ask him um, to help us to become a clean and pure vessel for him, for his spirit. He has made us clean. He has cleansed us of all our sin. But let us live in that cleanliness of sin. Let us live in that place of purity. Let us live in that place of holiness, of being set apart from the world uh, to live for God and to be um, filled with his spirit uh, so that others might see God in us and recognize him uh, moving through us in our words and in our actions. Um, let's go to prayer today and, um, and ask him to do just that. God, I ask you to, to be with each one of my brothers and sisters and with me, Lord, Lord, to come and, um, and remain upon us, Lord. The Holy Spirit came like a dove and descended upon Jesus and Jesus became the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I ask you to, um, baptize me afresh in the Holy Spirit. Fill me afresh with the Holy Spirit. Immerse me in your spirit, Lord God. Hallelujah. Friends, make that your prayer. Ask him, beg him, give me your Holy Spirit. Thank you that when I put my faith in Jesus, the Holy Spirit came upon me and the Holy Spirit came and lived inside of me and continues to live inside of me. But I want a fresh experience. I want a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. I want a fresh baptism in the Holy Spirit. A fresh, immers a fresh immersion in the things of God. Make that your prayer, my brothers and sisters. Make that your prayer today. Thank you, that Jesus, that you're the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Thank you that you have the Holy you are, You baptize us in the Holy Spirit. Friends, a song comes to mind. I'm just going to be bold and enter into it. I hope you know this song and can sing along with, with me. Um, but just enter into the spirit of it, into the asking God to give us his spirit of it um, as we sing. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Thank you, Jesus. Fall afresh upon us. Friends, continue to seek the Lord. Continue to ask him to baptize you afresh in the Holy Spirit. Go in the love and power of the Lord, my friends. Continue praying and asking him for everything that he has for you. God bless.